Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Weekly, daily Wednesdays where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux and open source. I'm Vince Stone, joined every week by Jill Bryant and everyone watching hello, us hello. live on Twitch. <laughs> How's it going? Got a bunch of things. Been running around like crazy. It's starting to get cold. We were talking about that last night when we were um, playing around in Trackmania. It's, mm -hmm. uh, I think tomorrow night it's going to get down to the zeros. That's zero C, so I think that's 30 freedom units. It's freezing wherever <laughs> wow. that is. Wow. But <laughs> it's 69 I, Fahrenheit here, right? which is in the 20s <laughs> well, it, Celsius. <laughs> it's it's like, usual for Southern California. <laughs> it's kind of balmy. It's like 11 <laughs> degrees outside, which is nice and warm. But we were talking in the pre-show about um, you know, really what I want, what I want. I'm, I'm going to cause it to happen because I need to build a gaming light PC, like a, something that can just barely game. And by barely game, I need it to run an 11, 12 year old title. Guess what? Trackmania 2, because I want to set up a spectator cam so we can all just play and I don't have to worry about trying to manage cameras and play at the same time. Just let it run so everybody gets a fair shake on the stream. And it makes me really want a Steam Cube, Jill. I really oh, want yeah, to get you, you need one. <laughs> this imaginary thing that doesn't exist because Valve hasn't made it yet. Yeah. I want one. And what do I mean when I say Steam? I want a Steam. I want the Steam Deck internals. I don't want the controllers. I don't want the screen. I want a just block. the computer. <laughs> Give me an HDMI out. I'll even take a Display Port. <laughs> Whatever you got, that's all I need. Make it two ninety nine. I'll buy two. Make it two fifty. I'll begrudgingly buy one. But yeah, <laughs> what I'm thinking about doing. I'm going to do a test tomorrow. I got uh, I got all of the video and audio recorded for the um, camera hack video. That's done. That's ready. I just got to stick it all together. That's this afternoon since I'm in here. But tomorrow I'm going to try, because I tried to install Trek Media on one of these boxes. I think it, it was either Pedro's boxes or the box you're on. And yeah, there's some small old i7s. Um, yeah. They were originally like Dell 3010s and uh, Pennywise sent in a RAM CPU. And, you know, they, they're upgraded. Less ancient i7s, but the iGPUs. I was surprised it launched. I just wanted to see what type of dumpster fire it would be. It did launch. And I got everything down to low and, you know, it was getting about eight, nine FPS. Yeah. <laughs> it was, uh, it, it, it was bad enough to where I wasn't upset, you know, cause if it was like 50, I'd be like, oh man, I could, it was just so bad. It's like, yeah, that, that's adorable. Then I installed everything. So I think tomorrow I will test it out on Jackbox, uh, which has a 5600G yeah. in it. See if I can get away with an iGPU solution and I'll turn one of these boxes since I already have that B350 motherboard. Yeah. I'll take that, get another 5,600 and slap it together and we'll have like a multi-purpose thing because I don't want to spend a ton of money on this. Yeah. I want to make it cheap. Well, my recollection, Ven, is with the 5,600G, whenever I've ran games, as long as you use low to medium set settings, you usually can get 60 um, frames per second on most games. So there's that. <laughs> I'm not going to be running this at low and medium settings on a screen. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's an older game, so you might get away with a uh, higher. <laughs> I don't know. We'll get some real you numbers okay. tomorrow when I get a chance. We'll find out. And worst case scenario, I got a 2060 Founders Edition sitting in a box doing nothing. There you go. That's yeah. a backup card, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, worst case scenario. You know what? I guarantee you, I know for a fact that I can run Trackmania on a 980. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. This, this is not a difficult game, but I'm. <laughs> I, I, it'll be curious to see if that is doable. How about you, Jill? What's up? Oh, boy. What's new? So. Well, me and Steve went to Disneyland on Saturday with my nephew, Evan, and his boyfriend, Chris, and we had a wonderful time. It was the opening weekend of the holiday celebrations at the park, and we had fun uh, seeing some of the shows and going on some of the rides, including It's a Small World with the uh, Christmas Overlay. It's one of my favorite rides, so it has uh, jingle bells in, in between It's a Small World and the... And they decorate it for the holidays, and it's and it's absolutely beautiful. <laughs> and we had a nice dinner today, dinner together, and went to Festival of the Holidays. Um, their uh, food carts at Disney's California Adventure, and had fun uh, doing the troll through the food carts. That was fun. <laughs> <laughs> you throw a troll through great... food carts? <laughs> no, no, doing a walking, you know, uh, experience of of going through all the different food carts and trying a bunch of different food. <laughs> okay. Cart trolling, we call it. <laughs> Cart trolling. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> there, there are pop-up carts just for uh, special events at, at Disneyland, and this is the Christmas ones. And they make specialty unique foods just for this event. It's really great. <laughs> Sounds healthy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, it was it was delicious. <laughs> Let's go ahead and jump into it. Fedorf thirty seven is out, and uh, yeah, I, really, I looked through all that. Just going to tell you all about it. And I think the big exciting thing, at least for me, out of curiosity, is going to be the Raspberry Pi, though. Yeah, that is cool, Ben. So yeah, Fedora Linux thirty seven has been released with lots and lots of major changes and improvements. And the first thing I actually noticed is I ran the Fedora Linux Workstation 37 Live ISO in GNOME boxes uh, on on my install of Fedora uh, Linux 36, and I noticed how much quicker it loaded in the virtual machine. So that's that's a great sign. And I love, I actually really enjoy the default wallpaper. It's kind of uh, a, a river with abstract... Uh, uh, stones. It's a very abstract image of of uh, 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 a scenic, but yet beautiful scene. And it it actually the wallpaper boots. Fedora in. magazine. Hi, this is old man Vin. Uh, pictures, screenshots. These help. Uh, yeah, it didn't. It didn't. They didn't have <laughs> any. Any is the word you're looking for at yeah. all. They have none. <laughs> none. They had none. Oh, we should have checked another link, Ben. <laughs> so, so, anyways, the desktop wallpaper boots in GNOME Light mode with a bright blue and green color palette for the scene, but the wallpaper can be easily switched to dark mode with a darker color palette of blues and greens in the appearance setting menu. Also, you can do this in the in the GNOME 43 new quick settings feature accessed in the top right of the GNOME panel. So it's a, this is also a good distro to test out GNOME uh, 43. And so I think I am ready now to update my Fedora 36 rig to Fedora 37. So I'm going to be doing that this week. And so, yeah, there's so many new things with this version of Fedora, including new Fedora additions. There's a Fedora Core OS, which is the successor to Atomic Host. This provides an automatic update mechanism geared toward hosting container-based workloads. There's also the Fedora Cloud Edition, which provides a great Fedora base to run in your favorite public or private cloud. And it features- Big shout out. It's yeah. Foss. Screenshots. Yes, I just went through a we bunch go. of different websites uh, looking Vin for screenshots. Found it. <laughs> Vin found found one. Good okay. on you. It's Foss.com. <laughs> yeah. And as I said, Fedora Workstation uh, features the latest version of GNOME 43, which includes a new device security panel and settings. More core GNOME apps have been ported to the latest version of the GTK toolkit, GTK4. And it has a much more modern look and feel, which I really love. And the Fedora server now produces a KVM disk image to make running server in a virtual machine much easier. Very nice. And yeah, as uh, um, Ven was saying at the, the top of the story, the Raspberry Pi 4 is now officially supported in Fedora Linux, including accelerated graphics. Woohoo! <laughs> so there's yeah, so many new changes to Fedora. You know, all the programming languages and system library packages have been updated, including Python 3.11, Golang 1.19, Glibc 2.36, and LLVM 15. So there's there's so much. Look at the, the show notes and see all the new upgrades to Fedora 37 and to go download it. The biggest update, <laughs> I just want to go ahead and let everybody know. On Fedora 37, <laughs> Emacs 28. That's right. Ah, That's nice. right. You've been waiting for it. I don't know. <laughs> I, I got to love. I mean, you know, I came from Red Hat back in the day to Fedora Core 1. Like, yeah. I, I grew up with Fedora. I grew up with Red Hat mm -hmm. and Fedora in a way. And it's still, still, Fedora is one of the few, like, no frills distributions. That you can kind of, not even kind of, you can definitely install it out of the box and tell it, hey, I want you to do install this, 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 and it pretty much stays out of your way. Huge yeah. fan of that. Mm -hmm. And I think there's something to be said, and there's always going to be a place 
for distributions that do that. You know, it's not trying to deliver the Fedora experience .tm copyright registered trademark. Um, yeah, yeah. And what's also uh, um, awesome about Fedora Ven is that it, it has it's a nice combination of stable and updated. You get updated drivers, you get updated apps, but with a lot of stability. And hasn't yeah, always been the case, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is now. It is now. In the last there uh, was couple a day years. Oh yeah, Fedora Core when you OS. Installed Fedora. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you crossed your feet, and it kind of grew into that. Now. That's true. It That's kind of grew into that because originally when Fedora branched off um, Red Hat Linux, it was Red Hat with a different yeah. GUI installer. If you were doing the GUI installers. But yeah, there was um, it it got dicey there for a minute. Uh, it where did. It, it was an adventure, and I think usually by like somewhere around like twenty four, twenty five, I was like, oh, because I installed it in a VM just mm -hmm. to check it out. And I'm like, that was boring. It just installed it and didn't have to do anything, and yeah. which is a good thing. Mm -hmm. But here's what I want, and I'll keep saying it every time we talk about a Fedora release. My my imaginary dream world. I want this present to show up. Ups, you know, under my upside down Christmas tree, uh, a Fedora <laughs> LTS workstation edition. Because I know we have a workstation edition of Fedora. Yes. But you're still going to have to deal with that, you know, you still, it's month rolling. Life yeah, cycle. Still, well, it's not yeah. a rolling release. Well, no, no, but it does update frequently. So it's that in between rolling and stable. <laughs> so you got that 13 month life cycle. And, you know, I understand like IBM going. And that's when you go buy, you know, a license to run RHEL. That's too much of a commitment. You know, I, I want something that hardware and software vendors could target that is going to stick around for a while. And there's, they do that now with um, Ubuntu. Because say what you want about Canonical. They're like, hey, we're going to do an mm -hmm. LTS that lasts forever. Yeah, it's wonderful. Yeah. Or to a lesser extent, because um, I'll even, you know, I run Debian, I'll throw Debian under the bus. I mean, but at least, you know, when you're running a release version of Debian, it's usually like three or four years. No problem. So, you know, I'd like a version of Fedora that, you know, was going to stick around and say, had like, a, you know, it doesn't have to be like super long, but like maybe five years. A couple years. years. Yeah. yeah. Something yeah, to say, these that. packages are going to stay the same, they're not going to be a moving target. And they're going to get security updates. And I know, mm -hmm. I know to a non insignificant portion of the audience, they're like, that sounds incredibly boring and dumb. Yes. But when you're setting up a production environment for content, multimedia, or streaming, you don't want moving parts. Yeah. This is the important thing. So uh, true. Yeah. And I go back <laughs> and forth with this with, um, People are looking up because I yeah, I've learned to sort people out, especially on the audio side. When because mm. they'll say, "What should I?" So, what's the best thing to set up for uh, doing audio production? And somebody will say, "Arch, like get out of here, leave." The, the adults are talking. Um, you don't want to do a rolling release, but what the real question is: Do you want to build a dedicated box for it? And same goes for everything. Like if you want to set up a dedicated audio system, video system, and this is how it's done in the real world. You don't want it to update this update, is why you will yeah. see machines disconnected from the internet i can't tell you how many production studios i've been in audio production studios are the biggest criminals of this there will be mac g4s running pro tools or versions of ableton in the corner disconnected from everything that if you touch it they will jump on you and drag you out yeah <laughs> why because it works not broke don't fix and you know sim goes for like that's why you'll always see those like random weird machines that around you're like why is there an xp box well it turns out there's a reason for it but i'd like an lts version of fedora but yeah you know there's that's a good idea there used to be cent os for that Jill. No, not yeah so much. well i guess Rocky. you could just have a have a fedora f box that you don't run dnf updates on i know people who do that <laughs> that just want to keep it <laughs> stable so <laughs> see i like the idea of something like that but i wouldn't have that box online oh okay <laughs> right so you want to get security updates yeah um even after it's one eol but hey that's another great release from Fedora. Awesome. That is awesome for. Now, 
<laughs> Let me know you about something that is absolutely was not a great release, not even a little oh, bit. Oh boy. <laughs> something I know way too much about. I'm talking about DaVinci Resolve. 18.1 is out. Social media support, neural engine AI updates, speed improvements, and all that is uh, maybe it's there because welcome to testing in production. Not me testing this in production. Black Magic testing this in production because this thing should have an alpha tag on it, at least a beta tag. And uh, it's really crashy. It is. It's uh, not just for us Linux nutters either. If you go to the DaVinci Resolve support forms at Black Magic, it is about 19 pages of people going, this thing is a dumpster fire right now. Oh, and, boy. <laughs> but they have added some things. Like, finally on Linux, we have high DPI scaling. That's been Yay. enabled on Linux. Good news, everybody. It almost works. Um, <laughs> there, there it is, almost working. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh wow! <laughs> yeah, none of the thumbnails, none of the UI elements. They're just like missing, you know. Because I'm going to be me if I'm going to complain about something. I'm, they don't have a GitHub account, obviously, for this, but they have support for them. So I log in. I'm like, uh, yeah, there, there's a, it's a wee off, lads. And um, Petru, Pet Iru comes back and he's like, hey man, you know, you gotta go through all this basic stuff. Anyway, I found out what the problem was. The high DPI scaling at 100% causes all the UI elements to be broke. However, uh, if you crank it up to 150%, not only works. you did a comically oversized large UI that yeah. I don't know how you would ever be able to use because like your window to edit stuff is super tiny, uh, but it does work. And but the thumbnails are like grayed out, and rendered weird, and you can experience that in between crashes, which is really neat. Um, wow, <laughs> it's not that great. It's not that great. And the biggest thing is, is uh, if you follow me on Twitter, I know, or I think I may even posted this on our Mastodon instance. I said, back up your data. Do it. It will save you one day. And when it does, you will do a victory lap where you post a screenshot on whatever social media you're using saying, remember, back up your data because you're so grateful. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. grateful that you had a backup of something. Because I was three backups of everything. <laughs> That's my motto. <laughs> I was so excited because I was so crushed. Resolve 18.1 does a database upgrade. Never had a problem with a database upgrade in Resolve. And I've been running Resolve okay. since version 12. Not been a problem. Upgrade, you know, it's always a little thing. Like, da, 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 da. now, here's the issue. This is one of those upgrades where if you try to open it with a previous version, it doesn't work. All right? Oh, okay. So I do the upgrade. <laughs> I don't think about it. I'm like, da, da, da. I'm like, I can't see the UI. This thing's crashy. I don't have time for this. I got to finish this uh, video I'm working on. So I roll it back and I open up the um, project database to access. And it's like, nope. Can't access that. Why? Because you just upgraded it, dummy. I'm like, oh, <laughs> huh. Um, uh, what, do we, what, what do we do here? And it took, I had that moment of panic, right? I'm sitting there. I know. I'm locked out of all of my projects. I'm like, oh, no, I'm not, because even on this box, I have um, deja vu. So yes. I, only, I only lost uh, like six hours of work. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Which wasn't bad. That's better than having to redo all of the templates and all, or just sitting around waiting on, you know, for this to get fixed whenever it gets fixed. But a couple of new features in this we can look forward to. And I think one that's going to be interesting for some people I wanted to play around with, this is the only reason I installed it initially, is there's a new dialogue editor. Nice. Which has the ability to level dialogue, allegedly. Mm -hmm. And it's using the neural AI engine inside of DaVinci Resolve. So I'm like, mm, I at least want to see. I want to see, Jill, how that compares against this piece of cutting-edge technology uh -huh. back in the rack above the blue thing uh -huh. from uh, 1986, which is called an Apex compiler that we use for live stream. That you can, I, I want to see if something has finally been invented. <laughs> now, we'll nice. be able to do it. Or, it's an unfair comparison because it's not going to be able to do it in real time like this does. But, uh, yeah. So... I've been going to say, try this out. Don't uh, don't even bother <laughs> with this. Just wait. Wait until we get 18.2, 18.3. More stable. <laughs> but if you do want to play with it, make dev, um, 
Make Resolve Dev has been updated for this if you want to do it. If you want to live that crashy experience, if you do just want to play around with it, go for it. Do keep in mind that you're going to need, basically, let me just save you all kind of time, you're going to need an NVIDIA card if you want to run Resolve, mm -hmm. Resolve on Linux. That's, that's reality. Yeah. There's a 37-page thread on the Blackmagic forums if you want to play the adventure of trying to get an AMD card with a proprietary binary drivers up and running. That's on you, and it doesn't work with an iGPUs or um, you know Intel or AMD. So uh, yeah, hold off on this. Hold off. I'm Love still that. running Resolve 16, so I'll just keep it at that. Maybe upgrade to 17. <laughs> but yeah, so this version also has something kind of cool. It has vertical resolution options in your project settings for social media like TikTok. So now can now Ven can TikTok better. <laughs> But I'd have to like take a break from delivering all my um, hot YouTube shorts. Yeah. <laughs> yes, there is that too. <laughs> or a, or, or a Twitter <laughs> or a Facebook uh, <laughs> snaps <laughs> and snapshots. <laughs> I, um, it is kind of a interesting like dark time. It's something I used to it joke is. about. I was uh, like, so when are we going to get? Uh, appropriate layouts and customizations for a vertical video. Here it is. Yeah, that's been a thing. I've been uh, talking with my students for years because uh, the professional packages have never had it because true professional uses uh, broadcast standards or um, HD or 4K and, uh, <laughs> and horizontal, not vertical. <laughs> so, but Jill, it's, it's you got to quit being old, changed. man. That's not what the kids yeah. are using. Uh, oh yeah, no, it's. it's I've been it's against uh, vertical now. video since I don't know the first time video started showing up on the web and people are holding their phone like this. Yeah, not yeah. like this, right? And you know, it's really only good for mobile because you know your standard TV or your standard uh, uh, computer monitor is horizontal, not vertical, and so you you yeah. But <laughs> who's got a computer, Jill? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Would you have like a PC in your house? Ooh. <laughs> yes, hundreds. <laughs> the um it, it's interesting. It's interesting times. I mean, uh, especially if you're doing cuz I know people that are currently editing like they're starting to move some of their workflow over to like no joke doing the YouTube shorts. YouTube shorts. Yeah. And uh, uh, if you TikTok. want a taste of that yeah. um TikTok, I just don't use that principle because there's so much <laughs> wrong, like with that <laughs> company, like with Ty. I mean, I'm going to get the political side of it, but yeah, <laughs> do not have TikTok installed on your device unless you are fully comfortable with genuinely having all of your data mined and you have no control over it. <laughs> yeah. Well, as a result, they have a really good search engine. <laughs> so that's why. <laughs> I'm pretty sure if you ask like 99% of the people who've ever used TikTok for like a search engine. Oh, well, no, it, it, it has really good discoverability with searching for videos and there we dance go. challenges and whatnot. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> yeah. Mor moral of the story. Uh, I have no use for vertical video. I, I will die on this hill because mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't have any mobile devices I carry around like that because I get upset. I get upset. <laughs> I'm looking at you. Any Android app developer that only has your app available in vertical. That drives me up the wall. And I'm looking at you. Um, hang on. Who do I? Uh, <laughs> is it uh, Gen Z? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, uh, no. It's one of the authenticators I use, which <laughs> drives me up the wall because it's uh, vertical only. So I open, you know, I have a tablet set on them. Um, landscape right yeah just sitting on the mm -hmm. desk here and i gotta open this thing and i gotta flip my heart sideways jill to read the numbers to punch them in every single time yeah <laughs> that is oh, very irritating so, yeah 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 i personally don't care for vertical but it's just what the apps a lot of the new apps are using for the young pe young people so <laughs> well i don't carry around a mobile device with me all the time either yeah so, I see mean, i do oh <laughs> uh, yeah Rotatable, yeah, see that I we don't need hardware to fix a software problem done. We don't yeah. <laughs> I feel you. I feel you. 
Let's talk about a peel down, strip down, high performance, maybe yeah. high performance, yeah. different looking version of Firefox. Yeah. So this is nice. Um, there is a new minimal web browser being developed that not only looks promising, but it also looks beautiful. It is called the Pulse Browser, and it is an experimental Firefox fork that is focused on increasing work productivity and has a very um, hyper minimalistic UI and built in tools. And this means, yes, it runs fast. It runs faster than the, the stock Firefox. And it includes easy to access sidebars, includes the uBlock origin spyware blocker by default, and is very easily customizable. And what I did like is it it features tabless when you launch the browser, which um, tabless is a beautiful, customizable new tab page for Firefox that features widgets for weather, clocks, a quick link and speed dial for your favorite websites, or even literary quotes. And one of my favorite features of tabless is the, the back, it has beautiful backgrounds that are powered by the libraries of Unsplash and Giphy. And, or you can use your own, of course. So it's it's it has a really nice uh, presentation when you when you you boot the browser and you see it for the first time. And dis despite the Pulse browser still being an alpha, it's actually very stable. And I'm using it right now right now for my show notes as well to do the show. <laughs> so I used it all uh, yesterday to write my show notes, and I'm using it right now on my broadcasting rig. And well, I would expect it. it to be at least as stable as Firefox because, hey, at the end of yeah. the day, this is Firefox with some plugins stacked on the top of it. Um, yeah. You know, it's Firefox minus the telemetry and some point telemetry mm -hmm. in Firefox, so I've stripped down UI. And it, but they did, they looked at Vivaldi and they're like, you know what? Vin yeah. really loves that annoying <laughs> sidebar that shows up on Vivaldi that takes a minute to figure out every time I install it how to disable it properly. Oh. They saw that and it was, they were so excited it irritated me, they added it. <laughs> oh, I love sidebars, Ben. That comes from the old Netscape years. <laughs> I didn't have sidebars on my Netscape. I did. <laughs> I always had sidebars on my Netscape. <laughs> that's that's not Netscape's fault. <laughs> that's a Jill problem. I like Don't that you Netscape can customize it. <laughs> no, um, I, I like sidebars. I, I did with Opera back in the day, and I, I use Vivaldi. So I think it's a really nice You don't feature. get to come at me and say, hey, we're going to do a minimal interface, but here's the sidebar. Yeah. It, that, it doesn't work like that. Oh, um, well, you can turn it off. <laughs> I'm sure I could. But if like if step one, if my first experience using anybody's browser, and again, I use Vivaldi too. I, yeah, I, I've said I the same thing do. about Vivaldi. I'm like, if my first experience <laughs> with your browser is like, how do I get rid of that? Um, maybe, yeah. <laughs> maybe. Uh, here's the thing. Uh, it's just that, I mean, it's using BetterFox user.js tweaks, which is nice, and mm -hmm. um, the tabless extension for a better tab experience, which I assume is for the type of people that like to use tabs instead of bookmarks. But these are also the people that complain that my browser is eating all my memory. How many tabs do you have open? I'm not telling you that. <laughs> then go away. And um, Firefox QR code generator extension, which is nice. Uh, speaking of QR codes, I finally got, I had an opportunity to use the uh, Steam QR code login this week. Oh, nice. When I was putting yeah, track yeah. mania on one of these boxes, <laughs> uh -huh. I'm like, oh, this is going to be a nightmare because, you know, Steam's going to have a pet. It's going to be that day where Steam has a panic attack and it's like, you're not you and flip out. Yeah. No, it just <laughs> popped up and it's like, hey, take a picture of this. And we click. It works. Boop, it just worked. I was like, that was pretty <laughs> nice. That's pretty decent. Yeah. For the price, Jill, you can't complain. Pulse browser dot app. All that's going to be in the yeah. show notes. Uh, you know, I installed it. I mean, it's Firefox. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it has a nice tar tar gun zip you can download and test it and just launch it. And I'm happy to see stuff like this because we have everything yeah. that, you know, we have the all the Chrome variants. We have our Braves, we have our Vivaldi's, and we have our uh, Microsoft Edge, you know, all, all, all of the Chrome variants. We, we could use some more. Um, yeah, Firefox variants. Firefox variants. I can't And minimal wait. ones to boot. I can't yeah. wait. There are going to be so many comments naming off like, Whatever yeah. it's like, squiggly moon purple sideways fox. <laughs> yeah, and there's all, so many different versions of the, Firefox. Yeah, there's like these random obscure <laughs> versions of Firefox. Like I had somebody like champion up uh, one version. I went looking to it, and I was like, three people use this. Yeah. 
and that's go. Cool. You do you more, the merrier. Happy to see it. And um, yeah. Well, this is the lightest Firefox I've found, so I'm very happy about it. You know what? It's probably a better experience than Firefox on mobile, on Android. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I agree. I agree, yeah. (laughs) Pretty low bar, but I'm just saying. (laughs) Go check it out. Uh, They have a GitHub page, open source. Play around with it. Now. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. Time. Yes, that is a very orange pie. I wonder why, Ben. Isn't it? Uh, I, think, I think there might be some lemon in there, too. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we got to get into week, not one, not week two, but week three of mm-hmm. our new segment, which used to be Slice of Pie, but it's now the more powerful and cheaper than a Raspberry Pi 4 segment. And this week, we're talking about the Orange Pi 5. It's an octa-core mm-hmm. ARM, Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5, 32 gigs of onboard EMMC flash and support for up to, hold your breath, 32 gigs of RAM. Yeah, it can do that. 80 bucks for 8 gigs, 116 for a 16 gig board. And nice. they're open for pre-orders. They're saying in about two weeks, they're going to start shipping them out. And uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, <laughs> I was very happy, Vin, that it has on an onboard microphone. I think that was really cool. And it has a 26-pin header, a MIPI D- DeFi and MIPI CSI connectors for cameras or displays. And it has a neural processing unit with support for up to six tops of AI performance. Pretty sweet. And you can buy it directly on Amazon or AliExpress. And do a pre-order there. It's pretty cool. <laughs> Jill, everyone quit listening uh, when I said 16 gigs of RAM. They just zoned out. Like, wait, what? And what they, wait, what? Yeah. yeah. They're just Googling right now. I just yeah. killed the entire audience. Uh, <laughs> they're even available for pre-order on Amazon right now. Yeah, I know. So, I mean, sweet. if you were looking for, like, I don't even know what I would do with uh, 16, much less 32 gigs. And especially consider, okay. Yeah. You get Octocore rock chip. Uh, very powerful 32 gigs built in not th- yeah 32 gigs of emmc mm-hmm. you get ethernet i mean yeah i mean, yeah it's got the headphone jack and it's got gpio pins and it's got your old acceleration doodles on it for 116 bucks yeah yeah <laughs> Can't find find a Raspberry Pi four for lower than that price. <laughs> so. uh, no, you might be able to get a kit 200. for like two hundred and sixty <laughs> yeah. bucks, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know what? It's been a while. It's been yeah. a while, Jill, since we've taken a look. What do we think our current pricing? Oh, I should point out the one we talked about last week. What was it called? Um, yeah, off the, the off the top of my head as I furiously go through <laughs> the, the one website, with three holes. Um, <laughs> three the Ethernet tri-pie. Holes. Uh, yeah, tri-pie. What was it from Friendly? The NanoPi R. Oh, Friendly Success. Elect. Yeah. NanoPi. Jordan ordered one. Oh, good, good, good. Yes. Awesome. We were talking about it in yeah. the um, after shows in, uh, for Lenny's Gamecast Weekly, or it might have been during one of the segment breaks. And he's like, nice. I, I was just selling it. I wasn't selling it, trying to sell it to anybody. I'm like, can you believe the price of these things now? Well, like how powerful they are with how much networking. They just keep coming. Yeah. And they're they available. Keep, yeah. You just buy it. Yeah. <laughs> there, you, don't, you don't have to get on a waiting list. You don't have to like stalk at a fruit. It's just. Give them some money. They send you things yeah. like the old times. Remember the old times where you could just buy something and it would show yeah. up? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and 16 gigs of RAM, like. Sweet. I know. Up to, up to 32. 32. Yeah, that's what's impressive. <laughs> I don't know what I do with 16, like on an <laughs> SBC. Like even these boxes, uh, these two boxes here, these things are only using um, eight. Yeah. So being able to crank that up to. 16 and you get creative with that i'm sure people mm-hmm. come up with some uses especially at that price right yeah mm. definitely and the fact that it has an octa-core arm that <laughs> sweet very fast octa-core arm i don't processor. man yeah see now see i got all these other, these are the problems i have right now like i gotta build this truck mania <laughs> box <laughs> You got projects, Ben. I want to order that, and, <laughs> but I also want to. I still want to get that x86 little board that we talked about two weeks ago. 
you remember the raspberry pi um intel yeah. one i want to pick that up and i still yes. want the one yeah <sighs> so much money to speaking of money to spend if you want to support <laughs> us head over to linuxgamecast.com we got a support button patreon.com forward slash linuxgamecast we got merch shirts we got studio wish list jordan's got a wish list pedro's got a wish list jill's got a wish list you can help us out we do appreciate your support you can like and subscribe and all that if you become a patron you get access to our discord you get the uncut versions of these shows you get some sneak peeks trust me if you've been you're going to get first crack at the uh camera hack video that i'm working on and you it's mm-hmm. not even fair but it is a big thank you because you're going to be able to get them at the best prices because these things are silly cheap right now in the used market so you get to buy the whole them up and everyone else can fight among the scraps but come hop in our discord come say hi you can also get as- access to our discord if you are a twitch subscriber yeah. come play track mania with me and jill on tuesdays yeah. and thursdays or just tune in the other days of the week tomorrow night um Joe, I don't know if you're going to be back, but Jordan's doing Jorderlands 3, going through Borderlands 3 series. I know Joy, Jordan was able uh, to get Joe in last week, and uh, I think two weeks ago, Strider from Lutris popped in. So if you'd like yeah. to participate in that or just show up, you know, sit back and watch, we'd appreciate it. And Saturday and Friday, we'll be back for Truck Mania. Points match. Yes. Hop Woo-hoo. in, come play. <laughs> Get to practicing at servers yeah. open twenty four seven. So it doesn't matter what time zone in you're in. You don't have to show up live, even if you want to play asymmetrically like Katana does. Because you know Katana's busy. Dad has family. He's got kids. He's like, man, it's late at night before I get a chance to sit down and play on the computer. Mm-hmm. It tracks all of our scores, so you can always take a look and see who's where on each map, and you can play it that way as well. It is kind of fun. It is brilliant. Mm-hmm. Saturday we'll be back for Linux Gamecast Weekly. As well, but Jill, we're yeah. a little bit over by yeah, about seven are. minutes, so okay. we got to bounce out of here. Uh, do we got any famous last words? Oh, uh, we have a new patron that uh, that showed up this morning uh, by Atco. Yeah, we I think that I... last week. Yeah, <laughs> no, it wasn't on our list. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Anyways, okay. Can we do the credits. <laughs> yes. <All right. laughs> <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Thank you to all our patrons. Oh, yeah, I noticed someone was talking about Sea Monkeys in chat. Sea Monkey is one of my favorite uh, web browsers, too. Sweet. Web browsing sweet. Thank you to our producers, our executive producers. We have our Theron in chat. We have Chibsy. We have Steve Husband. <laughs> we have Linux Ganuru. We have Don M, we have Katana Steel. Got my Steve husband. <laughs> I can't read them fast enough, all the <laughs> all the people to thank. We have too many wonderful uh, patrons and supporters to we'll thank. See you next week. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. That's gonna do it. <laughs> bye bye. And my brother. 